very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McClure, and it's 10 o'clock sharp, and we are, of course, live on Facebook Live. A very, very warm welcome to all of you globally throughout the world as we broadcast on the world's top broadcast platform, Facebook Live. Just for you, Dinky Doo, one hour of superb scintillating information, education and entertainment from me, Scotty McClure, the world's top broadcaster. A very, very warm welcome to you now. So much to discuss tonight and so little time to do it in. So as soon as you can get to your Facebook and get commenting, the better I say. Lots and lots of you watching, but I've got serious discussion for you tonight. Now, today was an old firm match in Glasgow in Scotland. And it was between the old firm, which is Rangers football team and Celtic football team. Rangers football club and Celtic football club. And, of course, for many, many years they have been rivals. But I have a proposition for you. After a hundred years of argy-bargy and of trying to give the impression that there are differences between the two clubs, I think it's time to bring these famous world clubs together and um, have Glasgow united. So Rangers and Celtic become Glasgow united. That's what we're discussing tonight. So lots and lots to discuss tonight. Also, I would quite like to discuss should the mobile phone companies switch off mobile phones between 7 o'clock in the morning and 9 o'clock in the morning and 4 o'clock in the afternoon and 6 o'clock in the evening so that parents can spend more time with their children and vice versa, vice versa, the children can spend more time with their parents and they're not distracted by mobile telephones. So there we are. So we're talking about that tonight. So I would say to all of you, get your comments ready and tell us what is what. Also, should Scotland be independent? I would say most certainly from an economic point of view. And I don't think that the UK should stand in the way of Scottish independence. So there's three main subjects for you to discuss tonight. Now, we've only got an hour and we've got lots and lots to get through. So I would urge you to, as quickly as possible, get discussing there. Give it your best, Scotty. Switch off from the advertising for five minutes, please. There we are. What's that about Motherwell near Glasgow, says Rod Hardesty. Yes, indeed. I no more unions, Scotty. We're trying to break away from the one we're in, says Ian Walker. Very good comment, Ian. And uh, Kenny Lowe watching there, of course. An independent, independent Scotland. Yay, says Umar Arsad. Excellent. So, Lots and lots of you have comments. If you've just joined us, a very, very warm welcome. This is the World's Top Talk Show. We're live on Facebook Live every Sunday evening at 10 o'clock sharp for one hour only. And uh, you would have spotted, hopefully, the promo earlier to tell you what we're talking about. Just one minute of promo today. Normally we do about maybe 25 minutes, but we did one minute because I thought, give us 60 seconds and we will give you the world. I, Scotty McClure, will give you back the world. If you've got lots to talk about, hi, Scotty, it was great to see all Glasgow football fans put their biases aside to salute a great Glasgow footballing hero, Tommy Gemmell, requiescat sketch in patchy, Tommy Gemmell. I could not agree more, Tony Mac. A very, very good point indeed. Leave the mobiles alone, Scotty. It's no China, says Ian Walker. No, but the problem is parents are that busy. If you see them um, at the school, they're there supposed to be collecting the child. And they're on their mobile, on the mobile. The child turns up and goes, hiya. And they go, yeah, just a wee second. I'm just talking to your Auntie Fanny here. And uh, that sort of thing. So they haven't got time for the child. And I think if you can't do that, if you go on a train, just watch everybody on the mobile. So nobody's actually chit-chatting, which they should be. Evening Scottish is Fraser McMillan. And to you, Fraser. Glasgow United. Utterly brilliant. Stop all the hassle and get a great Glasgow City team, says John Toms, a very fine businessman. Big, big social media man. Knows his stuff. 
The mobile phones are a great idea, says Gary Earl. I think five to seven would be a better time. Also, new cars to have automatic shutdown and mobile phone activity, saving fines, penalties, and lives. Now you guys are talking sense big time. Dinky do, I say, from Scotty McClure. Uh, Jerry Cott is watching excellent Auntie Fanny, brilliant, says Martin Monarchy. Yes, they are. They're on talking to their granny and their Auntie Fanny. Joanna K. Jackson is watching in the United States and Maine in the USA. Joanna K., I say welcome and thank you very much for your contribution to Scotty McClue's GoFundMe page. So there you go, folks. Now, uh, John Tom says, let's debate Glasgow United. What colours? would be best for the strip. Well, John, I would have thought if you could actually incorporate the red, white, and blue, and the green and white of the hoops, green, white, and gold. Scotty, my neighbour's drunk outside shouting, Rule Britannia, says Charlie Farley. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, Charlie. Yes, must have been in his conscience. Um, do a topic on common law and educators says Chris McCauley. What do you want to know about common law, Chris? Put your question down. And remember, there's a whole world watching out there globally. So somebody is going to be able to come up with an answer for you. That's the beauty of Scotty McClure's show. Uh, we've got everybody here. We've got very, very clever, clever people. And we'll be able to get you the answers because we're all together. This is the people's show. This is the people's program. And we're making improvements to the program all the time. This, I forgot to tell you, is program number 25. The rest you will see on YouTube. The Scotty McClue channel on YouTube. Make a note of that. Obviously, you're not going on to just now because we're live with the program. But that's something you can be looking at. Scotty McClue has several Facebook pages. Scotty McClue is on Twitter. So get following Scotty McClue on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google+, Plus, on LinkedIn, if you're a business person. We are very, very, very big on the world's social media. And we're bringing it all together just for you. This is The People's Show. Uh, I beg you to say, tell 10, to tell 10, to tell 10, to tell 10, says Umar. Umar, of course I'm going to say, tell 10, to tell 10, to tell 10, to tell 10. These are big Scotty McClueisms, along with Dinky Doo. That's the catchphrase. So if you ever hear somebody shout, Dinky Do, you know it's come from Scotty McClue. Fantastic. Very good point, Martin. Yes, indeed. Uh, please accept my friend request on Samantha, says Umar. We will do that, Umar. The only thing is we have so many friend requests, and obviously they have to all be gone through, because sadly at the moment you get all these sort of dummy things coming in. John Paul Preston. Uh, get your tickets for Rain Town in Glasgow, the 2nd of June, says James Bauer. Good, James. We don't mind that at all. If you've just joined us, folks, a very, very warm welcome to the program. You are, of course, watching me, Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster with the world's top program. There we are, the world's top talk show. Omar says, thanks. I love you. Uh, my Auntie Fanny and Uncle Dick are now happy with you, Scotty says Martin. Excellent, Martin. That's what we like. Get your comments going. The folks were thinking about uh, getting rid of things like Rangers and Celtic and having one big Glasgow team called Glasgow United. Now, there's no way there should be a problem with Glasgow people standing together at the football. Um, back on at last, Scotty. I don't know what happened last week, says George Mullen. George, I don't know what happened either. So there you are. Scotty, independence is coming, but at a price. I hope we don't give away any more of our land and commodities, because it's India or nothing. No negotiations. We go and take what's ours, take our stuff with us. Well, there was a chap on the radio very, very recently on national radio saying the Scots will disappear and they will take their oil with them. Dear the Doug, what happened to the bunt lens, Scotty? I got it sorted. I phoned technical help and got it sorted. So there you are. Scotty McClure, when are you releasing Scotty merchandise, says Samantha Cassane. Now, Samantha, this is something we need to talk about. Um, Scotty McClure badges, 
things like that. I can remember in a charity auction, two Scotty McClure badges went for £600 each. So that just lets you know. Where's your lovable lassie, says Chris Aitchison. Chris, I have to do all this on my own at the moment, but it won't be forever if you lot can get to gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClure and put some money in. As I say, McClue is free, but we're hoping to raise money so we can set up an independent, free media with no agenda other than the people's agenda. So if you'd like to contribute to that, you go to gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue and stick in a fiver or a tenner or whatever you've got. Uh, gloves, says Gordon Riley. Yes, we could merchandise gloves, Gordon. No problem with that. Um, so there we go. Now, what time do we have? Is it a share point? I say I've got to steal the time here. Yes, in a couple of minutes' time, we shall all share the video, if that's all right with you. Is Scotty McClure fiction or man, says Chris McCauley. Chris, you see it all sitting in front of you. It makes me laugh when people watch one of my programs and they go, what is this all about? Is it a spoof? Is he, the, you know, like the pub landlord or Mrs. Merton or, or uh, you know, I mean, you know, Alan Partridge? I mean, what, what, what is it? We're what? And the answer is, you're watching me. You're watching Scotty McClue. So there you go. Scotty, if I had five million, I'd honestly donate it to your cause, says John Paul. John Paul, thank you for that. I feel if one million people, remember Scotty McClue has audiences of millions and millions and millions throughout the country, and there are 60 million, I've been on national radio, if one million put in a fiver, we're sorted. So there you go. And uh, if one person put in five million, we're sorted. Uh, John Tom's has shared the video. Let us know. We appreciate it. John, thank you very much for that. Derek McGonagall's watching. Dinky do to you, Derek, from me, Scotty McClue. Right. Let's get lots of discussion going because we have so much to talk about. It's a little time to do it in. We have to finish at 11 o'clock sharp. So we're only one hour of the week and all of you the most important thing about building and building and building and building the audience for this worldwide global program is that all of you share and share and share and share. Would you like to all do that now? Just share the video and let's get going there. Excellent stuff. So we all share, 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 share. That's it done. Glasgow United could have shared a Glasgow City Song, yes, I belong to Glasgow big time at the old firm games. Nice to hear your banter again, my man, says Anna. <laughs> Thanks for that, Anna Moyes. Lovely to hear from you. And Margaret Bonner says, hi, Scotty, and sends a couple of kisses. I get people going, oh, you're reading out what we can see. We can see what's in front of us. Scotty, don't be reading anything out. But, of course, I need to read out your comments until we get the phones established. Once we get phones in and get you all chit-chatting, and uh, we had a little swearer who spoiled it, ruined it for everybody, and we were Skyping in on the phone, but we can't take that risk, of course, because we're guests in people's houses. So there you are. Uh, should a United Old Firm materialise, how does one address the deep-rooted hatred that exists towards each other? Any swiping away of such claims ignores the forced silence imposed upon we get weekend bigots says rudy zach this is very good rudy yes um upon the weekend bigots just a wee second by our current scottish government as a result of albeit late legislation yes no by mouth just because the bellowing of sectarian chants has all but dried up does not mean that it has vanished well if you think about it, religion, let's take religion. Religion has never, ever, ever caused a problem in the world. What causes a problem with religion is a lack of knowledge and understanding. Now, Rangers and Celtic grew out of Christianity. So there you go. And uh, one side were the breakaway brethren, the Protestants, and the other side tend to remain with the Church of Rome the Catholics and Catholic just means universal so if somebody talks about fairly Catholic tastes in music they just mean these tastes are universal so all I'm saying is it would take very very little 
to say it doesn't matter. You are a denomination of the Christian church. So what you're getting is a core Christian setup coming from the religious side, and then you add all the world's other great religions. Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, Sikhism, you know, you name it, Hinduism, and all of those are standing together. So we're in a different world from the world of the 1880s and 90s when these clubs started playing and vying with each other and what have you. So I think really the uh, the days for any sectarian splits in central Scotland between Protestants and Catholics should be uh, coming to an end anyway. So there you go. That's my thinking. So there shouldn't be any sectarianism. And I mean, some of these songs are rather beautiful. Anyway, I was listening to The Fields of Athenry the other day, which talks about the days of imperialism and oppression. Marvellous. So there you are. Um, doesn't mean it's vanished. Very good, Rudy Zach. Yes, I do agree with that. Yes. Right, we're going up now. What about Partick Thistle, Scotty? Well, I went along to a Partick Thistle game one time and I, I wasn't sure quite how to get to Fur Hill, and I said to the policeman, how do I get to Fur Hill? He said, you just follow the crowd, sir. I ended up in the supermarket, you know, this sort of thing. Uh, what's your thoughts on life after death, says Gordon Riley? A very, very good subject, Gordon. I think you cannot have all this wonderful experience and not put it to good use. So when it's time for us to either go up and smoke or to lie in the cool brown earth, I think that our spirits, remember, you have this three days when the spirit was supposed to leave the body. And I think that the spirit goes on and lives on. I remember asking one of my Labrador dogs, who was he? Because he was such a happy and delightful spirit. And you think, what has he been before? Do you remember people used to say about little ones, oh, I think that one's been here before. You know, so I would think that there's a possibility that we go on in spirit, if we're a decent soul, right? The baddies will just frazzle away to nothing. Uh, tell people about the Stedman Scotty, says Christopher Colley. Yes, what are you talking about, Chris? Straw man, says Christopher Colley. What are you talking about, Chris? Uh, talking complete and utter nonsense. Scotty, do you think Indy 2 will be announced at the SNP conference? Well, Martin, I don't know. I'm not actually an SNP member. Uh, I'm not a member of any political party. Uh, I'm in fact pretty well apolitical and I'm not say a great nationalist or anything like that. I'm just a realist stuffed full of common sense from the tip of my toes to the top of my bonnet right here in my head. And uh, I would say that uh, it would be very interesting. It would be a good time to do it, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. We'll just have to bide our time. We'll just have to uh, cool our ardour and see what happens. Remove religion from sports, says John Tomth. So there you go. You look like his big brother, says Umar. Right, who's big brother? The straw man's big brother. I see. Right, I get you now. Why do the over-60s not want independence, says David Gardner? David, it's not that the over-60s don't want independence. The over-60s are comfortable because they have a British pension pot. And they're thinking, well, I, you know, why change horses at my time in life? Who knows if it will work out? And that's what Gordon Brown was playing on when he made that speech just before Indiref. Had everybody listened to Scotty McClue just before Indiref, probably Scotland would be independent right now. So you can go onto YouTube and you can put in Scotty McClue on independence and you will get the facts. That's the lovely thing about it. Uh, simply remove religion from sports. The two aren't logically linked and it's unreal that people get conned with this nonsense, says John. Now, John's got a very fair point there. What is the connection? But the thing is that everything to do with our establishment is connected with religion. So since Henry VIII fell out with the Pope, we have the Anglican Church set up by an adulterer for the purposes of adultery, and the Anglican Church, the Queen, is the head of the Anglican Church. So there we are. 
Then, of course, we have Catholicism throughout the world. So the Pope, the Holy Father, is a powerful and influential figure in our lives. Certain countries are very much under the thumb of the church and have been for a thousand years. So it's quite difficult to shake that off. Plus, you have uh, some people who are non-believers, uh, some people who are atheists, some people who are agnostic, some people who just are not sure at all or are not interested. But that doesn't mean that you have a massive movement throughout the world against religion because the world tends to run on a religious basis. But I say, if we have the knowledge and understanding, why would you fight anybody on it? You just say, that's your belief. That's fine. You're in a belief system. Uh, who else have we got? So there we are. I stopped this from going up here. Hinduism isn't actually a religion, says Louis Faber. Right? What is Hinduism then, Louis? You have to define it. And uh, who else have we got? Giuseppe Bacchetti and 15 others have just shared. I thank you for that, folks. Very, very important. Now, uh, if you can keep sharing, and also if you can go on and tell everyone, are you watching Scotty McClue live globally on Facebook? If you're on Facebook anywhere in the world, then you're more than entitled to watch the world's top talk show with me, Scotty McClue. Not a problem at all. John Bones, Indy 2 will not be announced by Nicola Sturgeon, as she knows she's not won over the over 60s yet. And we'd lose again. No, I don't think so. There are figures being bandied about that go up to 72% of Scots want independence. I would say probably 100% of Scots want independence, but some are just short on confidence and they don't want to change from the status quo. People are not happy with change. I mean, let me show you this. I don't know if you can see this here if that's coming out properly it's from hm government and it says on the front of it this came in through my door before the eu referendum why the government believes that voting to remain in the european union is the best decision for the uk so there you are i know you're seeing it backwards hm government why the government believes that voting to remain in the European Union is the best decision for the UK. So we've had a serious, serious shoot on. And then the back of it, it says there, the government believes that voting to remain in the European Union is the best decision for the UK, protecting jobs, a stronger economy, and providing security. The EU referendum is a once-in-a-generation decision. The government believes it is in you and your family's best interests that the UK remains in the European Union. So there you are there. That's it, folks. It's all there in front of you in a government publication. So that's been quite a ton around. I can tell you that for nothing. No charge. All right, so uh, we will see. But uh, no, John, I don't think we would lose again. Uh, but why would NMD not vote for independence in Scotland? You need to have a very, very good reason. And I would imagine it's just a lack of knowledge or a lack of confidence. So there you are. Ignorance or anxiety. Uh, what's wrong with a sweary word that's past the watershed, says Dean of the Dug? Yeah, but I mean, this was unpleasant. This was sectarian stuff. And McClue is not interested in that. Uh, Louis Faber is telling us that being a Hindu means that your ancestry comes from around the river Sindh. So there you are. But remember, of course, there are great rivers involved in religion. And there are great religious rivers. Look at the, the, the Ganges in India. You know, because everything grew up around the rivers, Louis, if you look back to it. Because it makes sense, because people need to drink water. And that's where the water was. I'm an over 60s, and we were lied to by the unionist media. Oh, no, sorry. The over 60s were lied to by the unionist media. Um, I got sent to a different school from my pals through religion. There is sectarianism. The irony is not... One of us is religious. It divides. It only divides if you let it. I mean, the great unionist thing at the moment is that Scotland is divided and it's divisive to have another referendum. Not an excuse. 
I'm sorry, but uh, Scotland is united as a country, absolutely united, but it does have to make a decision. So there you are. So it's not divisive, it's decisive. That's what Scotland is. Julianne Scott, one of the tunes from the bands is the same tune, the Welsh tune, Men of Harley. Yes, dum 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 dum. Uh, McClure, you're bang on the money with your views on sectarianism. It's the stuff of the dark ages, says the very wise and wonderful Gordon Stirling from, uh, from uh, Long Niddles there. Tony, I have to agree with the former Scottish Minister Jack McConnell who said that sectarianism is Scotland's secret shame. Religion should have no place in football. Sectarianism should be in the past, I think that is. Say more, in the past. What do you think, Scotty? Yes, I don't think there should ever be a problem with sectarianism. I mean, if somebody comes up to me and says they're of a different belief system to me, I don't go, oh, well, I don't like you then. You know, there's, there's absolutely no, there is only one race. You can't even have racism. There is only one race, and that's the human race. And we're all members of the human race. But even the outsiders are welcome to watch Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live. Uh, so there, if you've just joined us, folks, and you're wondering what on earth is going on, you're watching me, Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, with the world's top talk show globally on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform. So all televisions and radios go off on a Sunday night at 10 o'clock sharp because that is McClue time. That's the people's time live on Facebook Live. Uh, Scotty, in your honest opinion, how can we educate the no voters, says John Simpson. It's quite simple, John. The no voters would only have voted no if they lacked understanding of how the system works. Now, Scotland contributes £40 billion annually, at least, to Westminster. That's a massive, massive, massive part of the British government's income. And the, the problem is, because it contributes so much, the ordinary population, the people in Scotland, are very short of jobs and of money and of facilities and of services. Because no Westminster government could ever understand the challenges of travelling throughout Scotland, of trying to get to the islands, of islands that need aircraft to island hop, of the cost of ferries to people. The bridges have been sorted out by the Scottish government. So the Scottish government have been tremendous. They've been very, very instrumental in sorting things out because to the Scottish government, Politics is not a game. To the Westminster government, we've seen that it is very much a game. We've seen that the EU Brexit setup was treated as a game. I mean, I actually voted leave um, because I knew that it would also bring Scotland back to the table with Westminster, but also I believed that there would be money put into the NHS because it said it on the bus side and we were told by people that we trusted that that's what would happen and it turned out that they'd misconstrued the truth so that's what say uh, that's what's happening there so i mean it would be madness to say no to independence look at every other country in the world look at every former crown colony um, and dependency they've all gone for independence and um, they've been very very successful so Scotland is the last remaining outpost of the British Empire. And uh, it's time that decisions about Scottish things were made in Edinburgh, in Holyrood. So there we go. Uh, so that's what we do. We actually have to say, um, what else have we got here? What about Jeremy Corbyn saying he has no problem with Indiref, while Kezia Dugdale says she has a problem with it? Well... I'll be quite honest with you, the biggest mistake that the Labour Party ever made in the whole history of their movement, yes, if you look back at Labour history, it's the People's Party and one of the huge centres of the growth of the Labour movement was in Scotland. 
and you heard Keir Hardy and you heard R.B. Cunningham Graham. Brilliant, brilliant men. The, um, Duke, the rageous Duke of Montrose at the time. Another very, very clever and able man. You had brilliant lawyers like John McCormick uh, looking after the independence movement. And of course, the independence movement grew out of the Labour Party. So the Labour Party were very big on home rule and independence. And of course, they betrayed their roots by sticking with Westminster. Uh, pardon me. And I think if what had happened there, if the Labour Party had backed independence for Scotland, there would now be a bit of a power struggle between Labour and the SNP instead of the SNP having a clear mandate and a landslide sending 56 members of Parliament to Westminster. So whatever a unionist um, party says in Scotland is really an irrelevance nowadays because it doesn't carry any weight. All right, uh, so there you go. Scotty Strawman, check it out. Tell us next week. Do you have a movement, um, says Gordon Riley. No, I am me. I am entirely independent. I have been invited many, many times to uh, consider becoming a member of parliament, but I would need to do it as an independent, because you wouldn't want whips shouting at you, Hi, McClue, you better be voting the way you tell you. The way we tell you, or there'll be a big problem there, Sonny. Uh -huh. All that kind of nonsense. Scotty, did you hear the taxing people now to put solar panels on their roof? How crazy is that? Alan Smith says, Indy 2, I cannot wait. Well, you're quite right. I think Scotland cannot wait, and they need to be doing it very quickly. I was watching a political program on uh, terrestrial television uh, this morning. I talk about terrestrial television now because this is the future of television. And, of course, televisions and radios go off at 10 o'clock sharp on a Sunday night because McClure is broadcasting live to the world with the world's top talk show. I think uh, what you're actually looking for here, um, <coughs> Scotty, you've, have you got tomato soup on your tie? No, there is nothing on the tie, dear boy. The tie is purple and it is uh, nearly new and it's clear as a bell. Paul Rankin says, do you support independence? I support what is best for the Scottish people. I have seen Scotland's economy decimated by, um, you know, Westminster governments, you know, subsequent Westminster governments going on. And I have seen the Scottish economy decimated. When I was brought up, places like Greenock and Paisley and Kilmarnock, Motherwell, Hamilton, they were absolute hives of activity. Edinburgh, Glasgow, of course. I mean, we have our imperial past in Glasgow as well. Glasgow ran the tobacco industry for the world uh, out in Virginia when America was under British rule. And I was wondering if America wanted to come back under British rule, come home to Mama. Uh, but so I want what's best for Scotland. Scotty, can I buy your cap for £5,000, says Frank McConnell. Frank, if you pop £5,000 into Scotty McClure's GoFundMe account right now, gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClure, then I will send you the cap. It's a deal. Hi, Scotty. What's your thoughts on Indy 2? I think it's maybe all too late, as it should have been done in the 70s when oil and the fishing industry was at its best. Now it's weak. What we'd have to do as soon as we become independent is rebuild the Scottish economy. Everything goes into Edinburgh. If you operate in Scotland, if you're a supermarket, part of a chain or whatever, then you should account in Scotland. We should look at the Scottish stock market being reinstated, which is in the centre of Glasgow. In one favour self-determination for Scotland, it should be noted and cognizance taken paid to the notion that advises a vote for any other political party in Scotland at any future Scottish election is an, is an impediment to gaining it. This includes the Scottish Green Party. Well, I think really, um, you know, what we're looking at here 
is uh, the party setup would change if Labour, for instance, supported uh, independence, which they should have done at the uh, referendum there. Hold on a wee second. I'm losing something. I had something brilliant there. It's going up too quickly. And I just missed it. You see it before I do. Pensioners down south have some backbone, though, and rejected the government lies. If Scotland leaves the EU, Scotland will be crushed, I believe. A lot of companies survive of EU funding here. That's the reality. Well, John Paul Preston, if you look back, Scotland's been trading big time with the EU for almost a thousand years, right? That's the first thing. So uh, Scotland has a different setup. The old alliance with France in the 1700s and what have you, and all the goodies coming in, the lace and the brandy, the spices, the carpets, the red pan tiles, and what have you. But also England, when it was the centre of the wool industry, was big for trading with Europe. And leather shoes. So everything made from the animals. That's why you had the Highland clearances, because there was more money in sheep than there was in people. Uh, I think all religions are a joke, Scotty. Just a fairy tale from the past. Secularism is the way forward. Well, if I asked you a question... Are witches good or bad? A lot of you would say, oh, bad, Scotty. But in actual fact, no, they're not. The witches were clever women. And we should be talking about this because we've just had Worldwide Women Independence Day, right? When uh, women are looking for freedom and equality. Now, I don't actually have a problem with that, but then we need to talk about their driving abilities and uh, things like that. But um, I think it's quite interesting. Um, if you look at the whole thing, the women were very clever herbalists. And of course, the church run by um, males who were absolutely absorbed in their belief system decided to execute these women because they could cure illnesses. If you get stung by a nettle, what do you put on it? You put dock on it. Where do we find the dock? We find the dock uh, right beside the nettle. I was looking into Satanism. It's very interesting how it goes along the same lines as Catholicism. Very dark and very similar. Well, there we go. Well, of course, there was the fallen angel, wasn't there? Uh, the thing about my baby, it doesn't matter if it's black or white, says Charlie Fanny. No, because we're all children of the universe. And we actually, your so-called white people started in the African Rift Valley. So there you go. If you were to expectorate into a plastic cup and that was taken away and your DNA was examined, you would be very, very surprised. I can tell you that. Many voted no in Scotland's referendum, denying our nation the powers that other independent nations have at their disposal on the premise that early on in our... Oh, it's a way. I need to be quicker. Um, so there you go. Gordon Lull, says Ian Walker. Celtic FC think they're Irish but call themselves Glasgow Celtic. The Irish brought the troubles with them from Ireland, says Eddie Doby. Well... Yes and no. I think you've got to remember that the Irish people had suffered terribly under um, the British rule for years and years and years. That's why the Union flag was known in Ireland as the Butcher's Apron. Uh, so, so many Irish people have been killed by uh, British colonial methods. The most brutal on earth, says John, 90% of all countries attacked. Yes, the, the, the um, British were very, very aggressive. It tended to be the English really, to be quite honest. We call them British, but it was the English. Although having said that, the Scots ran the empire very, very successfully. And the reason that they were able to do that is because they didn't subscribe to the class system. So they could say to a general, instead of the general saying, don't, don't even look at me. I'm a, I'm a different class from you. All that stuff, you can't even talk to me. All that kind of nonsense. Uh, the Scots would say, listen, Mush, that's not going to work. And I shall tell you why. Um, I'm all for the rivalry that comes with the old firm, just like it should be with two big teams of the same city. But the bigotry and sectarianism have to stop. It's only at the end of the day, just a game. And it's the taking part that matters, not the winning. I uh, announced today that I like to get along to an old firm game early, because there's a chance of me getting a game. So there you are. 
Phew, sorry, that's garbage, says John. British starved and killed Irish people to force them to succumb into the British system. Well, the British did the same. The English did the same with the Highlanders as well. That's how you had the Highland clearances. You had the Irish clearances. You had the plantation. You had all that happening. So, yes, the British were very, very aggressive. There's just been a gentleman who's written a book about uh, India and what went on there. Um, so, uh, in, in, incredible stuff. So, the Irish didn't really bring the trouble with them. They brought a lot of the anxiety and uh, and the suffering with them. EU companies leaving Scotland. If it goes independent, they'll come to Scotland and we would flourish and we'll have more jobs. Absolutely. I mean, the EU would be very, very attracted to Scotland because it's a very, very attractive country. I want to see Greenock as the capital of the world, the financial capital of the world. Uh, my dad's as orange as the dawn. My mother was a devout Catholic. She named me John Paul. It hasn't been easy growing up in Glasgow. No, and it should be because a very similar city to Glasgow in terms of its culture and background is Liverpool, where I've worked very, very successfully over the years. The people of Liverpool all know Scotty McClure very well. And... Um, they, of course, have two big teams, Liverpool FC and Everton, and they stand together. The Scousers stand together. So the Ouija's should stand together. Maybe we can take our land back from the foreigners that own 95% of our land. Not like the Mugabe way, but buy our land back, says Ian Walker. Yes, it depends what you want to do with it. Because if you're talking about land or property, it's what do you want to do with it. I was once offered a... A lovely big country house. Scotty, would you like to buy this house? You'd be very welcome. Uh, and you'd know what to do with it. But I thought, what do you do with it? That's the thing. So I didn't buy it. Hi, Scotty from Australia, says Erica Meyer. Dinky do, Erica, from Australia. I love that. It must be in the morning there, is it? What time have we got? Oh, my goodness me. Time for a share, folks. Share, 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 share. The new dish up in Old Meldrum's Bunnet Supper. I in up at Old Meldrum there, the Bunnet Supper. Ah, they're a good can of falcons, so we can get started with the world's top phone in show at point the world's top platform Facebook Live. Uh, Joanna Menza says, hi, Scotty. Hey, Scotty Dinky Doo says, watch. SNP has 57 MPs. Sorry, I was one out. I do beg your pardon. Uh, now, the Tories destroyed the industries in Scotland in the 80s, says William Shepherd. Yes, where is Ravenscraig? Where is Leyland at Bathgate? Where is um, Linwood, the car plant at Linwood? You know, where is Argyle Motors? Where is Arrol Johnston? All these great old Scottish names. The shipyards, you know, Hall Russell, Cairds, Scots, Lithgows, Fairfields, Connells. Where are all these shipyards? You know, we need to look at that. Scots. Um, the UKIP ties as Louis Faber. No, Louis, not at all. Cheap. A cheap shot, Louis. And wrong, 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 wrong. Uh, so there we go. Scotty, what about the English-Scottish maritime border? Google it. England since 1999. I've been doing a land grab, which has put a five, four point five billion hole in our GDP. Well, we'd have to grab that back and say all the land, all the beaches round Scotland belong to the people of Scotland. So there you are. Run it as a sort of cooperative, I say. Uh, Glasgow United will never happen in a city that the council allows 53 sectarian marches in one weekend and shames itself by allowing Orange Fest in George Square, says George Mellon. Now, Let's look at the marching then, because you have Hibernian marches as well. Are they actually sectarian? The Orange Lodge believe in the Crown and the Bible. Now, it spills over into all sorts of things, English nationalism and what have you. But I think what the Scottish people need to say to secure these nationalists down south. Because English nationalism and Scottish nationalism are the complete antithesis of each other. Totally, totally, totally different. English nationalism is not good for you, is not particularly healthy. 
Scottish nationalism, very good. It's just the name that has been with the party and has stuck. And nationalist movement, what we're really talking about here is purely a change of management. So it's like buying a business. It's like saying, we, have, we used to have our head office down in London, but we've actually got it in Edmund now. We've moved the head office and we've got new managers who understand how to do business in Scotland. Uh, how about the sneaky budget going to tax the e-cigs? It's a joke. Any new fads that make money, they'll tax it. It's like the mafia. Well, Ian, I have set up businesses in my time. And the first thing that happens as soon as you announce that you are in business is the phone starts ringing with people trying to sell you stuff and take your money off you. And if you're not careful who you go into business with, they can attempt to eat your lunch as well. So you do have to be Weary. Yes, caveat emptor. Scotty, what about the English border? Well, we've talked about that. I missed your show, says Erica. Erica, never fear missing Scotty McClure because you'll be able to catch him up on YouTube. All the shows. This is our 25th worldwide global show live on the world's top broadcast platform, Facebook Live. And Scotty McClure, the world's top broadcaster, is with you as perennial as the grass. If you would like to contribute, because I'm looking to buy media assets so we can set up an independent free media, please go to gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. If every single one of you sticks five pounds in, we will reach our target very, very quickly and we can get on with it. So don't sort of back off from that, please. Go to GoFundMe.com as soon as the program is finished. You can't do anything at the moment because you're watching me. But as soon as the program is finished, go to GoFundMe.com forward slash Scotty McClure. Uh, Scotty hyphen McClue, I should say, gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue and stick something in there. Get your card, pop a fiver in and say, Scotty McClue has been with us for 25 years. It's his jubilee year. It's his 25th program tonight, which is fantastic. And uh, stick something in so we can buy some media assets. So there we go. Time for a share spot. Share, 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 share. And random sharing throughout the weeks, guys. I love it when I say 150 people have liked your video. But I would also love to see 150 people have shared your video. Sharing is the big word. Um, glad you're on, says Erica. Not at all, Erica. You suggested SNP would stop upon independence. This is not what's happened in the other 140 countries that have left the British colonial system. No, absolutely. The only reason I suggested they would stop is because Scotland has then become one nation and the SNP have done their job from the 1920s. You know, there have been different movements over the years, as, as many people will well know. And, uh, of course, you had the Scottish Covenant and things like that because they didn't want to be linked as a, in any way subversive or baddies or anything like that. So please, I would say, once Scotland declares they will keep the pound and they will keep Her Majesty the Queen in the stars she's accustomed to, your problems are over. Independence will happen. So there you go. Do not take your eye off the ball because of the roar of the crowd. So there you go. Now, what else have we got? What colours should Glasgow United play in? What colour of strip should Glasgow United play in? We're asking here. I was thinking we need to incorporate the red, white and blue. And we need to incorporate the gold, uh, sorry, the green and white. But I believe we have gold in the hoops. Is that correct? Um, the Liberal Democrats are a waste of votes, says Ian. Well, no, I was watching uh, Nick Clegg talking. And it was he was a different creature to the one that had the coalition with David Cameron's mob. And it was very, very interesting to, to watch him talking. He was appealing that the Brexit thing was a nonsense and should be put a stop to. It may well still be put a stop to because the Lords, and I don't like the way we're knocking the House of Lords. I understand people mocking 
the House of Lords, but knocking the House of Lords because it's quite good for older people to be keeping the younger people in order. Um, so there you go, Partick Thistle, Glasgow United, they should be included, says Craig Sheridan. We should have to put that to Partick Thistle, but certainly Celtic and Rangers are the big players. Uh, so there we are. Uh, eyes, jacket, tie, all blue. I didn't think I'd be falling for you, says Adam Fuller. Thank you very much, Adam. Very, very flattering. I don't think I travel on that bus. Uh, Glasgow United, would they play at Hamden, says Hugh Miller. Now, Hugh, very, very good point. Which ground would be used for Glasgow United? Parkhead or Ibrox? Or would you be better going to Hamden? Or even sell them off and build a new ground for Glasgow United? One team, one singer, one song. Fiona Mora Graham. Inshore fishing is vital to our island and coastal communities. Fishing is going to be sold out again by the UK Gov. Yes, Scotland needs to do ownership of fishing the second it's independent. And they need to come to something very serious with Europe. Because you look at the Scottish fishing fleets massive down the Clyde Ayr and Girvan and Kirkubri yes and go across to Caradale and Campbelltown and Tarbot and then out to the islands and then Ardrishig you know fantastic they all had fishing fleets and we need to look at that Oban Inverness Bucky Banff Going up, uh, going up the west coast, Stonehaven, you know, Arbroath, Montrose. Absolutely, you could hardly get moving for fishing vessels. And the government decommissioned them all. And we need to have that industry back, although it's a harsh industry. I can remember, I think it was um, Willie Hamilton, the MP for East Fife. I wasn't terribly keen on him because he didn't like the Queen. But uh, I can remember he said he would like to see the day when nobody had to go down a mine again. And there's only one thing tougher than a fisherman. And that's a fisherman's wife. Right, uh, so there we are. That's what we're talking about. Uh, amazing, I used to listen to you as a young teenager, says Chris Leachman. Absolutely, yes. 25 years of Scotty McClure as the world's top broadcaster. And now I'm on the telly. But only for an hour. Each Sunday night, there's talk of going, um, we had a midweek pop-up, which I'd like you to all watch, of course. I'm also uh, doing some stuff on Periscope, and we're building our platforms and our coverage as we speak. The very, very finest people in uh, social media work with Scotty McClure, and uh, it's tremendous what they've been doing. It really is. I absolutely am amazed. Remember, of course, you can get Scotty McClue on the YouTube channel. Remember that you can get Scotty McClue on LinkedIn. You remember you can get Scotty McClue on Twitter. And I would advise you all to go following me. Remember Google+, Plus, LinkedIn if you're a business person. Tune yourself into Scotty McClue because we can make things happen for you. Um, hi, Fiona Graham. I'm a martyr for the indie movement and a seriously great advocate for truth, says John. Tons. Uh, marvellous stuff. Gordon Riley says, is that Dennis Taylor behind you? No, that's Scotty McClure behind you. Um, your caller thinks independence is too late. I live in the west coast of Scotland in Argyll, and uh, the Norwegians two decades ago were carrying out exploratory work near Arran. The findings were knocked on the head. Whoops, just a minute. When it says see more it becomes quite difficult knocked in the head as oil extraction would impinge or compromise the maneuvering of the submarines carrying out the uk's weapons of mass destruction true story the gentleman whose hotel the norwegians were lodging at advised him of this so they are the norwegians advised him well of course norway a very 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 successful oil producing country with a budget that would make your eyes water. So Scotland should be in the same position as Norway. And I think the Westminster government need to apologize for pulling the wool over the Scots' eyes over the last 40, 50 years. Uh, funny how in the old firm days they hate each other but come together 
when the Scotland team plays. You're absolutely right. Yes, it's incredible when I think about it. They do come together. And I think this rivalry thing is very much manufactured. It's a shame when you get the odd complete idiot, a meathead, who loses it because they don't understand where the line is. Yes, but, um, you know, sectarian-wise, we don't want any of that. The religion, I think, is actually out of it. It would be very interesting to see how many practicing Christians there are who actually turn up to the game, i.e., has everybody come straight from Mass to Celtic Park? Has everybody come from a Church of Scotland or from a Presbyterian service? to rangers you know have they come from what was known as divine service still known as divine service uh, yes i agree scotty you're a great broadcaster and very wise says erica erica share this around australia because we are a global program and we're going out there and we're wanting money on gofundme.com scotty hyphen mcclue forward slash scotty hyphen mcclue because we're wanting to build up funding so we can improve the program for you uh, you'll never get rid of bigotry. It's a disease, says Stephen Rooney. Stephen, you get rid of bigotry overnight. By listening to Scotty McClure, you could get rid of bigotry. I agree it's a disease, but it's one that's very, very curable. It's just like I was reading that uh, disease does not exist in an alkaline environment, including uh, many cancers. And that was said in the 1930s by a wise person. And I think that you can clear something very, very quickly. So the whole bigotry thing is an understanding of the differences in religion. It's saying the elements, the, bl the blood and the body of Christ, yes, that's what it's actually saying, um, are symbolic in Presbyterianism, where throughout the miracle of transubstantiation in the old Christian church, Catholicism, they believe that they actually transform within you. So you should still be able to sit at the Lord's table together. If you can sit at the Lord's table, you can stand at a football match together. Scotty, I was watching your video the other day, says Greg Connor. Yes, we sold thousands upon thousands upon thousands of that video. Have a good curry, Scotty. That will help you with your movement. Says God Riley, a he he gotten good for you. Recorded in a studio. Says Greg Connor, yes, it was recorded in a theatre, actually. We recorded it out in the uh, the theatre at Cumbernauld. Campaign to stop the bile of sectarian marches that will improve Glasgow and its image. Well, George, it depends. What do we think a sectarian march is actually all about? Because once you take the heat out of it, in other words, you cannot actually give offence. You have to take offence. And people don't realise that. They used to say to me, Scotty, I find some of the things in your programme can be a wee bit offensive. And I'd say, well, that's your problem, you know, because as far as I'm concerned, they're not. So there we are. And um, now the Highland Clearances says, Craig, with all the improvements, was a form of ethnic cleansing, was still a victim of Stockholm Syndrome and have yet to realise it. Yes, the Scots have become very passive in the years. They're not... A violent race and uh, you know the fighting of the highlanders and all that stuff then the selling out of scotland by the parcel of rogues in the nation uh, a few failed aristocrats who'd lost their money and took the english silver the english gold um, and it wasn't actually scotland was not theirs to sell that has all gone now so i'm afraid uh, if uh, westminster wants to sell scotland for a pound um, you know, just in a quick uh, a quick sale, then they should do that. Um, have you read Andy Whiteman's book, The Poor Had No Lawyers, Who Owns Scotland's Land, and How Did They Get It, says so Charlie Fanning. Well, again, it, it depended on what flag you fought under. Did you fight for the king and what have you? All that sort of stuff. And that's why, as I say, leave royalty completely out of the whole independence discussion. Um it's live, not recorded, says John. Oh, John's talking about this. Yes, absolutely. 250 comments. Scotty, I'm off to bed. I can't listen to any more SNP drivel, says Charles McLaughlin. It's a bit insulting. I voted to stay because I am an idiot. No, <coughs> you voted to stay, Charles. 
because you wanted to preserve the status quo. It's not drivel, and you don't have to listen to any drivel. If you've got something you would like to say, you're very, very welcome to say it, Charles. So nobody's telling you you're a complete idiot because you voted. No, it's just I don't think you probably realised exactly what was at stake. So there you are. So it's not SNP drivel, because independence is not to do with the SNP. It's to do with the Scottish people. And you're a Scottish person. So it's important what you're saying. I'm from Fraserborough. The Westminster system has destroyed our fishing. So Sal, you're free of the broch, Alan. You're up at the broch there. That's bra, that is. Uh, so there we are. So don't go off to bed in uh, a cream puff, Charles. Stay with us, because this programme will sort things out for your night, Charles, says John Tom. A plate of scouse isn't cheap anymore, says Ian Walker. No, no, absolutely neither. There's a plate of porridge. Scotty, do you believe the Macron report should be incorporated into all schools' curriculum in Scotland? Yes, I mean, the Macron report, Professor Macron um, uh, did a marvellous report. He was commissioned to do it. And uh, he did it, and a very, very, very fine economist, a man who really knows his stuff. And then, of course, they thought, oh, for goodness sake, we need to shove that under the bed. So, yes, I think we should be hearing a lot more of uh, Professor Macron's report. No doubt about that. Uh, don't forget the real indigenous people of America. Millions killed, says Chris Aitchison. Yes, of course, by colonialism and imperialism. So, there we go. Um, I said to a lady recently, I can teach you to speak North American Native Indian in three weeks. She said, how? I said, you see, you're picking it up already. Uh, no, John, it was an old VHS video Scotty did years ago when he was at Scott FM. I was meaning, says Greg Connor, yes, absolutely. 1996, an audience with Scotty McClue. You'll be able to pick them up now for a pound or two, but they will become very, very valuable. It's 9.40 a.m. in the morning here, Scotty, in Australia. Says Erica, which part of Oz are you actually in, Erica? Very, very important. You have to keep Rangers and Celtic separate. Great local derby. Lol, take the floor, says Ian Walker. Um, so, Glasgow Rangers were good today. What a game. Glad for the draw, says Mark Nicholl. I saw some people complaining because the Rangers fans were giving the impression that actually won. <laughs> Riddy, the accidental stumbling across the Macron report was the Damascus moment. I required to forever nail my independence colours to the mast, says Riddy. Riddy, I think everybody has nailed their independence colours to the mast. They just don't quite realise it yet. But it would be very, very foolish to stay uh, with an organisation managing you from 400 miles away who genuinely, genuinely, have evidence, have proved beyond all reasonable doubt that they have little understanding of Scotland's culture and people. Uh, Frank Connell says, are you taking Skype calls? I tried to phone Scotty at saying Caulfield. No, we're not taking Skype, Frank, because we had a wee swearer on one night who ruined it for every day. Say hello to my English family who are watching Scotty, says Beth. Absolutely, Scotty loves England. Never a problem, loves anything throughout the UK. It's just, as I say, it's time for um, self-determination. It was Charles the First, and sorry, I'm just trying to read this here, folks. It was Charles the First saying good night to is a unionist with a grudge against self-determination. Charles the First, excellent chap, should never ever have been divided into head and a body. That was something that the cowards got wrong, as I say. Um, now that uh, we have lost absolute monarchy and we have um, a different form of monarchy, constitutional monarchy, then we don't have to worry about Charles I. So you can rest easy there, although poor old Charles I can't. Nicola's going to need to do the right thing. If she doesn't, the people will need to, says John Paul Press. Nicola will do the right thing. Don't you worry about that. I think most people throughout the UK wish that Nicola was their leader, was their Prime Minister, to be absolutely honest with you. <clears throat> oh, is he? Comments going so fast, didn't even see. Never mind him. So there we go. Absolutely. I don't know what that's all about. Um, can you do a phone-in show, Scotty? Um, compared to your Scott FM days. So you don't like the show, Mark, but remember, this is a global show, and it's television. 
So it's a different creature altogether. So it's actually an excellent program because I know that from tremendous feedback throughout the week. Uh, Scotty, what's your relationship with radio stations? Are you banned from them? Craig, I have never, ever, ever been banned or sacked from any radio station. I have been bought out and moved on to other things. So just to let you know that this is all a complete myth that, oh, maybe he said something. Not at all. There is nothing to stop me working in radio or television, uh, you know, throughout the world, in fact. So excellent relationship, radio stations. Love your show, Scotty. And you, says Catherine O'Neill. I thank you for that, Catherine. Now then, it's time to push off. <clears throat> Can every single one of you Go to GoFundMe.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue and stick some folders right in there with your debit card. That will be tremendous. And then we can have our own independent free international media. This has been a tremendous program. I have been very, very privileged to have your company. And this is Scotty McClue saying have a wonderful week. Join us next week, next Sunday night at the same time. 10 o'clock sharp, be there or be square. Until then, goodbye everybody, goodbye. Take care everybody as you go. Goodbye everybody of Wheatorzain. Au revoir and a cheerio. And remember, everyone smiles in the same language. Scotty McClure has left the building. Dinky-doo!